Welcome back to another episode of Drink Tales. And today, we are doing part two of our look at Tabernero Pisco. So, last time we took a look at this, you know how we usually do this. On our first episode of the review, we always take a look at the initial drink in question. We always taste it. We always go over a little background of it. We give it a rating. And in our second episode, which is the one we're doing today, we always make a cocktail, an original cocktail. So what do we got going on today? Uh, we're, we're just gonna do a variation on the Pisco sound. Okay. Because every other drink that I've looked up to get inspiration from was always use pineapple juice. Saint Germain. And there's your drink. Ta da. So, Pisco Isn't Sours it? are usually just pineapple juice and it's Saint Germain? No, they're not. They, Pisco Sour is exactly what it is mm -hmm. uh, Pisco and lime juice. Okay. With an egg white. Okay. It's just that every other drink that I looked up. They always had Saint Germain or pineapple juice as an ingredient. And mm -hmm. to be fair, those flavors go well with Pisco. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised that that's what they paired it up with. It's just that they that's it seems that seems to be all they pair it up with. Okay. And some type of wine or sherry. Mm -hmm. So today we're gonna do our Pisco sour with Saint Germain. Okay. And some other stuff. Um, that means I'm gonna need the lime juice that I just put in there, the juice of half a lime, one egg white. Yes, let's do egg white as opposed to egg yolk, mm -hmm. which is not a thing. Mm -hmm. These smell sour. Um, next we will do. No, we'll do the same Germain since I have it out. Uh, one ounce? You know what? Three fourths of an ounce. Of Saint Germain. Mm -hmm. One ounce of simple syrup. Just to make sure it doesn't taste like garbage. Mm -hmm. Two ounces of Pisco. And usually, when you make this drink, your garnish will be put like dots of Angostura bitters on the top of it. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna use Peixos bitters, or Peixos, however you wanna announce it. I'm gonna use Peixos bitters to dash on top of it, but I wanna add a dash inside of it. Just why, to, why are you doing that? Just to change the flavor, see what's it's gonna happen. The, I mean, the flavor in and of itself is gonna be changed anyway. Mm -hmm. So, because we're doing a different version of the Pisco Sour. Um, one more ingredient I forgot to add, which I probably should have added it at the beginning, but whatever. We're going to do some mint. Okay. Mint is a flavor pairing that goes well with the elderflower mm -hmm. and the grapes that you will find in Pisco. Okay. Well, it goes well with grapes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really specify like the type of grape because Pisco, depending on what type of Pisco you're using, mm -hmm. is made up of several different types of grapes. You know, depending on where they grew at and everything like that. Okay. The yell about six to ten. And 
we're not gonna muddle this. I know I say that a lot when we do mint related drinks. We're not gonna mu muddle this. And this time it's not because I don't want to. It's more like because since we gotta dry shake this because of the egg white anyway, mm -hmm. the mint is gonna be well incorporated through two shakings. Okay. So first dry shake. We're gonna add our ice now. Garnish, we're gonna do the pink shell on the bitter. You know, there are better artists than me that know how to do this. Pretty good. I like it. Um, it's smooth, of course. Whatever you did, the qualities of this uh, Pisco, whatever you did, the quality of this Pisco that makes it more like a wine is accentuated in the drink. It's like a frothy wine. Well, I mean, it's made from grapes. Yeah, I know, but when you drink it straight up, you don't get that quality. You, it, remember I said it came off like a rum before. Mm -hmm. This is like a frothy wine. And I like it. And the elderflower in mint. are pulling the flavors from this pisco. Mm -hmm. This might be better with lemon juice over lime. Might be better. I honestly think it wouldn't really matter if you want my honest opinion. Mm -hmm. I 
But yeah, frothy wine, more like a in the vein of a well, because that's the simple syrup is in there, a Moscato. Yeah. Um, what do we name this? I'm gonna go for the low hanging fruit and name it the Pisco Flower since it has mint and elderflower liqueur in it. Mm hmm. The Pisco Flower. Uh, sounds good. Play on sour. So there you have it, the Pisco Flower. And that'll do it for this episode of Drink Tales. Be sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell so that you're notified of all content coming to the channel. Also, check us out on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Twitter. There's a spirit liqueur, wine, beer, snack, dessert, brunch type item, or any kind of recipe you want us to try, like a cocktail recipe, a snack recipe, dinner recipe. Hit us up in our DMs. Let us know about it. You know. Especially if it's something that you can't find here where we stay at. Also, um, that goes for locations as well. If there's any location, like a brewery, distillery, uh, um, speakeasy, bar, restaurant, anything of that nature, like I said before, any place that might be serving, uh, Pisco, let us know about it. Let us be the judge. If they got a favorite drink there that you think they make the best version of, let us know about it. We want to be the judge of that. But that'll do it for this episode, and until next time, peace.